So our next job is to keep a history of our games. But there's one problem that we need to solve before that. At the moment, we can only play the game once. After we choose an option in the menu and the game runs, there's nothing in the code that tells the program to run the game again. So let's solve this problem using the do while loop. First, let's create a boolean. And that's going to be the condition for our loop to run. And initially, this boolean will be set to true. And here, it's pretty clear that this variable is a boolean since true is a value that can only be assigned to boolean types. So I'm going to use the var keyword to keep things cleaner. But that's totally up to you. Then let's create a loop. We need the word do and curly brackets. And we're going to put the second part of the menu in the code block that will be run by the loop. So I'm keeping the greeting message outside since I just want it to run once. And then after the code block, I'm using the while and the parentheses. So that means that the code in the code block will run at least once, since the condition for this loop is evaluated after the loop runs for the first time. And that's the main difference between the do while and the while loops. In most cases, you can use whichever one you want. But if you want to have a look at advanced cases, there is a link in the show notes below. Now, since the condition for this loop to keep running is the boolean is game on to be true, if we want it to stop, we need to set the boolean to false. And that happens when we choose the Q option in our menu. So let's see this in action. Let's play our addition game. And we can see that the menu runs again. So now we can play our game multiple times. And to make the user experience a little bit better, Let's prompt the user to press any key to go back to the main menu after the game is over in the game over message. And for that, we need the console.readLine method. And since we now have two expressions, we need the curly brackets inside this conditional statement. And we will also clear the console every time the menu runs to tidy things up a little bit. Now, in terms of the readability of the code, I don't like the indentation of the menu at the moment. So let's just change this quickly. And now it looks a little bit more readable. So let's run the program again using the debugger. And I'll play the game in fast forward mode. Once the game is over, let's have a look at our program. If we hover over the is game on boolean, we can see that the value remains true. And if we press the down arrow again, the loop starts again. And before we try to exit the game, let's just get rid of the environment.exit methods since it's redundant in the queue option. After all, the program will terminate anyways. And in the default option, when the users type anything that's not in the menu, I don't want the program to terminate. So let's test the program again. And first, I just typed enter and that gave me an invalid input. And if I continue, the program runs again. And if I press Q, the program stops on my breakpoint. And since we changed the value of the variable, once we hover over the isGameOn variable, now the value is false. And then the program finally terminates. So that's it. Now we can play multiple games. And we've learned C-sharp's four types of loops.